Welcome to Ed Psych 721. I'm Dr. AC, and this lecture will introduce you to the course and what to expect and give you some advice for being successful in it. Before you go any further, pause this video if you haven't printed out your syllabus or have it open in another window so that you can refer to it as we go through this. As I said, I'm Dr. AC. Um, I work for the Clark County School District and I'm an adjunct professor at UNLV in the um, Ed Psych Department. And my research interests and, and the work that I've done in my PhD work has been based around learning theory and how children learn and research methods that we can use to get at and measure that learning. You can see on the screen, and it's on your syllabus, my email address. I use the Rebel Mail and the uh, your UNLV email address, and I'll come back to that again later on in this um, presentation. If you have a different kind of email that you want to use, please know that you must check your Rebel Mail regularly. I've also given you my cell phone number there. A text is best because I'm often in meetings or different things like that. I, I work in central office in the school district, so you may or may not be able to get me to answer my cell phone. But if you'll text me, I'll try to get back to you by um, late of that afternoon as much as I can. So let's get started on our adventure. This adventure, with an introduction to statistical analysis, it will give you a foundational understanding and some foundational skills. You will use those skills and what the procedures that you're going to learn in this class over and over and over again in your graduate career. So this class is really an important one to you as you're um, moving through your graduate work. You're going to learn about different ways of describing data you're going to learn procedures for making inferences from that, from the data. And we're always going to be talking about the probability that our inferences are correct. That's what statistics is all about. So just a taste of where we're going. In this class, we will use maths. Um, we, you'll be working with mostly basic operations. There's nothing terribly complicated in it. And you'll be using a package that's called SPSS, the Statistical Package for Social Sciences. This is a computer software, and in a few minutes here I'll tell you how you can access that. And there's information in your syllabus. Don't be scared about the math. Some people are, are really, really nervous. Uh, you know, the whole, I'm not good at math, whatever. We're going to approach everything conceptually so that you understand why you're doing the procedures. And I'll be there to help if you need any help at all. It's not difficult math, but please know that you will be doing math in this course. So where are we going? We're going to work with descriptive and inferential statistics. In other words, we're going to be making inferences about or using the data that we have. We're going to look at what's called central tendency and distributions. We're going to look at correlations and um, discuss those quite a bit. You'll learn how to do a simple linear regression that lets you predict what's going to happen next or, or where um, students are going. And then you're going to learn how to do a hypothesis test with t-tests. In other words, we're going to set up a, a hypothesis or prediction and then we're going to test it to see what the probability is that our prediction is, is probably correct. It's fun stuff. You'll really enjoy it. In an online class, it's quite a bit different than face-to-face. -face. And so um, there are different pieces that you will use throughout this course. Don't skip any pieces. It's really easy in an online class to just, yeah, 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 I, I get it, I get it. I'll just put together the assignment and get it turned in. You can only rely on you, and you should definitely plan and schedule time each week to do the activities. There is a course calendar created in Web Campus. You can refer to that. 
Um, the, the textbook is excellent. It's very readable. It's very complete. And um, my lectures will go, go right through that and explain it and give a few more examples and help you work through the textbook. With my lectures, when I post them, I also post um, the handouts for the PowerPoint slide or the keynotes so that you can take notes if you want to. I would encourage you to print those out and take notes as you listen to the lecture because when it comes time for quizzes, quizzes are open book, open notes. You're on your own and you can refer back to um, any notes that you take during the lecture or as you're reading through your textbook. Pretty well every week you will have at least a small assignment to turn in. These assignments are not designed so much to get at what you know. They're really designed to keep you on pace. I've had quite a bit of experience teaching classes online and I've taken online classes. It is incredibly easy to get behind. So you need to get in the mindset that you will have an assignment that you're going to turn in through Web Campus every week and keep right up on that. What do you need? What are the tools you need to get through this adventure? First of all, you need to be able to self-regulate yourself and pace yourself. Um, you've got to set up a schedule that works for you and I strongly encourage you to set up a, a given time a couple days a week that you're going to work through this this course and the assignments and then honor those times. You've got to be willing to work. This material is not easy and it's not fluff. It, this isn't one of those online classes that you can breeze through. There are skills that you're going to have to learn and practice and be able to understand. But I can promise you that if you will learn them, you will use them in every class you take from here on out in your graduate work. It will be worthwhile. And last of all, you need to communicate with me. The responsibility is on you to let me know if you need help, if something is confusing, if you can't figure out how to make something work in Web Campus, um, anything at all like that. You need to let me know right away if you need help. And I'm glad to meet with you. Um, we can FaceTime. We can email. There's all kinds of ways that we could talk through or get you some help. But I can't know that you need help if you don't if you don't let me know. Send up a smoke signal. Now let's go to the syllabus. It's your responsibility to read and become familiar with the syllabus. I'm obviously not going to read it to you. I'm going to take a few minutes though to point out some components that will truly affect your success in this course. First of all, note my contact information on page one. I do not have an office at UNLV but you're more than welcome to make an appointment and come and visit with me. My office is about two miles east of UNLV's campus, right off of the freeway on 95 in Flamingo, so I'm easy to get to, and I sure don't mind meeting folks for lunch or something like that if we need to, but the responsibility is on you to contact me if you need help. Please turn to the required materials and class format sections on page two of your syllabus. Note the information about the textbook. You must have the textbook for this class. You also need a calculator. It doesn't need to be much of a calculator and you can probably get by using Excel, Microsoft's Excel if you're really good with that. Most of the functions that you need are in there. So whatever works for you, but you're going to be calculating. And um, you will need access to the SPSS software. There's more about that later. This class is organized into five modules. Please note my statement there on page two about your UNLV email. I really do email out information, links, helps, suggestions, um, but I will use your UNLV email account that's listed in Web Campus, not a different kind of email that may be easier for you. So you're going to need to either forward your UNLV or, or at least check it a couple times a week, please. Further on down, or, or actually turn to page three. 
At the top of page three is a list of what you can expect to have to do every week on your own schedule. Do not skip any portions. I have not included a bunch of time wasters. I've really included pieces that will help you learn the concepts that you need to learn. You will need to self-regulate your own pacing and constantly keep that calendar and due dates in mind. We don't meet face to face with those reminders of what's due next week. So please note that last bulletin also. You're expected to turn in work that represents you as a graduate student. Please rise to this challenge. I don't appreciate getting work from um, most students that's excellent and high quality and then a few people seem to think that this is um, a, a junior college or freshman type class and they turn in um, work that is not acceptable. I will return it to you. On pages three and four you can look at the grading policy section. You will see that you can earn 200 points in this course. Almost half of your points will be earned through the quizzes at the end of each mo at the end of the modules. Those quizzes are really important. And then please note that you have a final project in this class. <coughs> Excuse me. Each work week, <laughs> sorry, plan on turning in a short assignment. These assignments will prepare you to take the quizzes. I've learned from teaching online classes that you need weekly assignments or it's too easy to leave all the work in a module until right before the quiz. That just, it, it's too difficult to do it that way. The weekly assignments will honestly take less than 30 minutes and most of them will take you about 10 minutes. If you read the material, watch the lecture, and have done the practice exercises, those little weekly assignments will be a walk in the park. You'll be fine with those. There are five SPSS assignments scattered throughout the course. These will require you to use the skills and knowledge from that module and apply them using the SPSS software. You will sometimes then have to explain what you did and why. Note the information in the syllabus about how to access SPSS software. And if you decide to buy it, please shop around, Google it, um, look around and see the best price that you can get on the graduate package. At the end of each module, you will take a quiz over the material. These quizzes happen through the web campus system. You will be able to access the quiz for four days, so you can pick when you take it. You have three hours in which to finish each quiz. You will not need three hours, but the system will not let you stop partway through and then come back in to complete the quiz. If you leave, you're done. The quiz is submitted at that point. The system won't let you start the quiz unless you have three hours before the deadline comes. So in other words, if the quiz is open until midnight Sunday night, you cannot start it any later than 8.59 p.m. on Sunday night because you've got to have three hours before the due date or it won't even let you start it. I consider the first quiz that you take a practice. You will get 10 points for simply doing it. It will be a real quiz, but I'm not going to get worry about a grade for each question. I want you to be able to see how my quizzes work and how the quiz system in Web Campus works so that we can work through all those details in a non-threatening and low-risk kind of way. So the first quiz is worth 10 points. You will get 10 points if you do every question on it. There is a final project rather than a final exam in this class. I will give you a data file, all the numbers that you need and you will need to answer four research questions by doing analyses on that data. And you will need to justify what you do for each of those analyses. I'm gonna put detailed instructions in Web Campus and we'll talk about this frequently during the course. You're going to do just fine on it if you keep up with the material. For each section of reading, 
I will suggest exercises that you do in the textbook. The answers are in your textbook. They're in Appendix D of your textbook. Every exercise at the end of every chapter has an answer in the back of the book. The problem with that is that the answer can be 536, but whoopee, how did you get there? So if there are computations involved, I will supply step-by-step -step worked out solutions for anything that you need to um, compute so that you've got those. These are not turned in or graded, but they're the heart of this course. They're intended to help you practice. Do not skip this opportunity. Do the exercises and practice so that you're prepared for the quizzes and you can internalize what you're learning. Late work is not acceptable at a graduate level. If you have a very unusual circumstance, please contact me as soon as possible. If you have a legitimate reason for taking a quiz early, you must get a hold of me before the quiz starts. If you get a hold of me, um, you know, four hours before the quiz ends, there will not be much I can do for you with adjusting the, the um, web campus system. I need to know before the quiz starts if there's something horrible happening. We all have piles of work, careers, families, teams to coach, church obligations, friends, pets, and life happens. However, you need to be serious about meeting your deadlines and arrange your personal life to make your coursework happen if you intend to be successful in earning a graduate degree. No one's making you do this. It's a choice that you're making and paying tuition for. This course is the foundation to any and all research methods courses you will take in grad school. Do not think that you can skip pieces or miss assignments and learn the material. You will pay dearly, not just in this class, but in future classes if you don't understand this one. And then in the syllabus, you can finish reading the UNLV policies on your own. They're pretty standard. I've taken and I've taught many online classes. They're wonderfully convenient, and it's great to be able to go through the material at your own pace. I absolutely love that about an online class. I'm just one of those people that likes to work through things at my own rate. I don't need somebody over my shoulder watching what I'm doing. But over the years of helping grad students, I found these four must-dos. You need to set up a schedule of when you're going to work on this class. If it's Tuesday nights from 7 to 9 and Thursday nights from 6 to 8, make that and schedule it into your calendar and get your family and friends to help you out. Keep a calendar. Keep up on those due dates. Remember, I don't accept late work. If you miss an assignment, it's going to be very difficult to miss, make up those points. Ask for help when you need it. There will be others in this class. You may um, email around. There may be some of your colleagues want to form a study group. You may want to do exercises together. You may want to uh, get a hold of me for a concept and we'll sit down in my office and figure it out together. But no one can help you if you won't ask for help. And last of all, the obvious one, I've, I've said it over and over again, do every activity. They've been carefully designed and chosen to help you learn this material. Well, you've just survived your first EPY 721 lecture. Let's get started now and enjoy learning about inferential statistics.